Hello, this is Chad Smith with BC Gurus, and on part four of our site templates video series, we're going to be talking about site templates. Go figure. Um, not to be redundant, we're going to basically just talk about getting your static HTML pages into BC templates. So when I start a local or a static HTML chop, I'm not really thinking about the pages involved. I'm more thinking about the number of templates I'm going to have to make. So with templates being easier to to use site wide, and you know we get to really reuse content that way, instead of coding out different pages, I'm going to code out different templates. So if we look at my example PSD, now this is a one of our brand new sites for a little restaurant in Denver called Ace Eat Serve. Um, basically, from our folder structure over here, you can see that we're going to have a home page with a three column layout on bottom and a nice jQuery sliding hero on top. And then, if we take out the hero and the home and add the inner, we're going to have to lower the footer a little bit. But so now we have an inner page that has one third, two third kind of layout with the side panel with navigation. So instead of actually worrying about the content and like the actual page pages that are going to be associated with this site, all I'm going to do is create a home page template and an inner page template. That's not to say that we're not going to need a default template. So if we go back to my slides here, we're going to think about the default view. Most sites are going to be by default have their like 404 or system pages, they're going to be already set to the default layout. And if you have only have an inner page that's a two column layout and a home page, you know, one of those probably aren't going to be very suitable for system pages. So I'm also going to create a, a single column layout that'll accommodate the default views. And if you look at the code that I started with here, this is going to be the home page for that A site. Um, set up my header to have all my CSS and favicons, some meta content, and then I'm really taking Business Catalyst in mind to when I create my menus, I want to keep my IDs on the list item, not on the A tag, because when I'm coding this out, when I make the dynamic menu in Dream or in Business Catalyst, I'm going to put this ID within that dynamic menu and business catalyst is going to put that onto the list item so it makes sense to keep it the way business catalyst is going to make it so with all my navigation navigational items that's how I'm going to do it I'm also kinda of concerned where the page content is going to be since this is going to be a one-third or three column layout I really want to make sure I have the right content for the actual home page in the back end that the client's going to be able to edit. And then I'm going to have my JavaScript down here at the bottom so my page runs as efficiently as possible. So after the site is chopped and we have our static layout set up for each template we were, we were given in that PSD or Photoshop file, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Business Catalyst admin panel and I'm going to create everything that I'm going to need to get my templates moved over into the business catalyst system so we're going to need to create all the dynamic menus whatever content holders we need the web forms the pages themselves the folders any products that you might have I usually create a few dummy products just so I can get it styled before we start adding all the real content in to the site and that allows me to get all my templates created before that happens. So here you can see my home page template for the A site that I was working on. So let's go back to the top. Here's the the static page. And then after I create all my modules and everything, I could come back in here, remove the navigation, add in my dynamic menu, whatever content holders I need, my web app for my slideshow. Still got my page content there. And there was a time with the old Chad, who maybe about circa January 2012, he used to put all of my footer code, so all of these script tags, and then all of my header code, or all the CSS files, 
and content holders as well just to make it a little easier on himself when he built out his templates which for the most part does seem kinda of like a smart idea but at the same time when business catalyst will output a content holder in the head tag ends up getting removed from the head tag and added to the body tag which is not good eats and probably doesn't make your site very efficient having all that in the body tag so now the new chad circa february 2012 just keeps everything on the page so if this page means that it's my my home page it's going to have a fancy box for a pop-up on the page and it's going to have a hero for the slideshow the jquery slideshow so that's not going to be needed on every page so instead of having a content holder and then two separate files that's going to get rearranged when business catalyst renders that content holder just better off to have it all on the template itself and then keep everything down here because not every page is going to use all this anyways so better to keep it on the page than to make content holders which is going to take from your 75 limit anyway so just something to think about so i kind of just touched on it a second ago but the last thing you need to do after you create the static site is and then you created all the modules in the business catalyst is to replace those modules within the static page which is basically going to create your templates so if you go back to Biz the dreamweaver for a second you can see if you like when the page just starts out you might only have one template over here in your ftp panel you can right click edit and duplicate and that's going to give you a about space copy template to work with and that's a an easy way to just create more templates within business cat or in dreamweaver and then copy in your static code and then start changing out those modules for the the static version some things to keep in mind when you're creating your templates is every template needs to have the con the tag page content on it um, if you're in dreamweaver and you try to save it without that it's going to give you an error and say you need to have the tag page content on this page for it to be saved there's also a limit on the number of modules you can put on a page and that's going to be 75 so as dreamweaver or as business catalyst renders the page and starting at the top once we get down to the bottom and say this content holder was the 75th content holder then when the page gets rendered out all we're going to see is module content holder and the number on the live site it's not actually going to render that for us to see so just one thing to think about when you're creating your templates is to watch the number of modules you actually put on your templates there's also a few different types of templates so now that we've created a few of them with our static pages we're going to make sure that one's tagged as the default and that's probably going to be the the single column page like I was talking about so that all the system pages have a nice clean layout for them to be shown we'll need a printer template and by default if you only have one template in there that's going to be both your default and your printer view so it's always good to go back in there and make another one for each of those so that you know if they print it out or if they, it's set to a default template it's going to have the proper template to work with and then we got the desktop tablet and phone now the ones you see here are all going to be considered desktop versions but if we go back in the back end of BC and from here if we go into our site manager and page templates you can see that this one here just is a new site that I built for the video you get the one template which is a default template and then it's going to be our default and printer view so we can either add a new template or within the back end of BC we can come in here and copy this template here to keep working on it and then if we go back to the front end you see there's a tablet and phone button and we can enable tablet and phone support so we'll save that we'll close and now we we'll open this template back up you can see we can go from the desktop content to a tablet content which is going to be empty 
and then a phone content, which is going to be device specific, so it'll know if you're in a phone or a tablet. And if these templates are empty, it's going to go ahead and just use the desktop content that's available. And as you can see back in Dreamweaver, we're automatically able to see each template for each phone, tablet, or desktop is going to be the original file.